it's the three amigos again. Hello. Seth, <laughs> Michael, and Jen. Um, I hope you liked our review last week because here we are again. But not all of us loved our books, so if you want to hear us talking smack about stuff, that's going to be us for sure. Um, I read something I wouldn't normally read. I read uh, Justice League Batman Dark Side War. Um, it's kind of interesting because it looks like some members of the Justice League got godlike powers or god powers. Um, Batman is riding around the, uh, what do they call this? this? Is it a chair? It's got a fancy name. What is it? Everyone that's reading this already knows already. And I feel really dumb when I can't remember the name of this chair. Oh my goodness. It's like Mobius chair or something crazy. Oh my word. Mobius chair. I was right. I should just go with it. I just kept on thinking, no, that can't be right. That sounds like Sandman stuff. All right. So um, it's a really cool issue. He starts out kind of pre-figuring out who's doing bad things and uh, going and stopping them from doing them. So he catches them before they do the act. And uh, uh, Commissioner Gordon's not very happy about that because how in the world are you supposed to keep people in jail if they haven't actually done the thing yet? Um, and Batman uses the chair to go somewhere he uh, probably oughtn't. This is a good book. Pick this one up. Um, if you are in the mood for really fun reading, really, really silly, uh, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one, I know it feels like you just read Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number one. It's because, yes, they did have that launch before Secret Wars. Here's the post-Secret Wars Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, where she's now a member of not the Avengers, but the new Avengers. It's adorable. You get to be, meet all of her friends. So if you have never read Squirrel Girl before, before they give you all the background history for all the people that are in her little group. Um, really fun. You will like this book if you. Do. I mean, it's neat because at the back bottom of every single page, she makes little side comments, and they're all very funny. So, pick this up. It's a good. My dad's. My day's been rotten. This will make your day better. This is exactly the opposite of what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> so I read two books that uh, both had Secret Wars tie-ins, or at least partial tie-ins that I didn't read during the Secret Wars, so I thought it would be good to pick up on a new story. First of those being Angela, Queen of Hell. And basically it's about Angela and her companion Sarah. Sarah um, finds herself trapped in hell, and Angela goes on a quest to save her, basically. And so that's where we're at in the first story. Um, when she gets to hell, there's something or someone playing mind games on her, and so she has some flashback dreamlike states into a couple different situations, um, and that's about as exciting as I can make it sound. But <laughs> if you've re been reading any of the Angela stuff and you like it, I I'm sure this is probably pretty similar to that. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to compare it to, so that's where we're at with Angela. Not Queen. for kids, very much. Definitely mature. not for kids, sorry. Yes. Definitely very mature. Second was Howling Commandos of Shield. So I didn't I didn't read the tie-in for this one either. This one was a lot more fun-loving than uh, Angela Queen of Hell, as you can imagine. But um, I'm not sure. It, it felt like an origin story, even though they had a Secret Wars tie-in. It was kind of the team's first time together. So they did a little intro on uh, who each one of them are. Kind of talked about that, and then basically. They go on a mission, and you quickly discover that they're bumbling idiots, and they cannot do anything correct. <laughs> great. And Which so, one's the idiot? Uh, all of them. Oh, so, great. <laughs> all of them. So, uh, especially the zombie. So the zombie that doesn't know which way to point a rocket launcher. So it's a, <laughs> There's some good, fun-natured comedy in there. Um, it looks like it could develop into something pretty cool. Um, like I said, I don't know where it was before this, but this is a good point to pick it up, because it, it was brand new for me, and it felt like an origin story, for sure. So... I wish I knew they were talking about it, but I saw someone making comment about this online uh, sometime today, and they said, please don't tell me I see what I think I see on the cover, so I don't know. You're going to have to come look at it and see if they s you see what they thought they saw. I don't know what they were talking about, but maybe there's something. No idea. Detailed analysis of the cover. I know. Yeah. Come and examine it. Well, I read uh, two uh, smaller publisher books uh, this week. first one was from Image, called Black Magic. Uh... Also, this book, definitely mature, not for kids or, or probably even really teenagers. Uh, mature audiences only for this one. Um, this is a, an interesting uh, book. It's very fitting for Halloween coming up. Uh, there's some uh, witchcraft in here. 
and there seems to be a, a small town where uh, witchcraft is taking place. And uh, then there's a hostage situation where the main character, who may or may not be associated with the occult things going on in the town, uh, is a sheriff who is trying to remedy this, this hostage situation. Um, one thing that's kind of neat about the art style here, it is the noir style. So uh, the majority of this book is, is black and white and shades of gray. So not 50 shades, but more like 30 maybe. Um, <laughs> but that makes it an interesting art style. But uh, you know, also, like I said, for mature audiences for sure. Um, it was a pretty good book. Uh, not incredible, but I, I think... Uh, interesting and, and some questions left uh, to answer. So uh, that's Black Magic. The uh, sec the second book I read is Art Ops by Vertigo. Uh, this book also is mature, um, but this was uh, a weird book. It's a weird concept. The idea here is that uh, art, and particularly like the most famous pieces of art in the world, are alive, and uh, the figures in the art pieces are alive and can be even uh, extracted from the art. Um, and so uh, you have some of that happening. And it's uh, just really weird uh, in a world where all art, graffiti, and famous paintings are all alive and, and paintings and artwork can, can even be made to come alive. So you got some weird stuff going on here. It's a, a pretty interesting story. Uh, I didn't love it, but it was a really interesting idea and concept of the art uh, being alive. So, um, there is an art organization called Art Ops that's trying to prevent people from uh, stealing the artwork or the figures within the artwork and trying to protect these things. So, uh, kind of like a, a witness protection program for art. So, uh, Art Ops. The art that comes alive, is it like bad or... No, not just necessarily. Alive. It's just alive. So, and mm -hmm. and the art can go into like like witness protection, where they try to protect it in the real world. So, without giving too much away. Written by people who have spent way too much time staring at art. Probably. <laughs> it's all red. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Hey, um, we're gonna make it short, but there's about a million new things arriving daily. I think I unpacked about 20 boxes today, so if you want to come and get your holiday shopping done early before all the really great stuff has been picked, um, you should totally do it because we've got some really great exclusive pops and Star Wars is starting to arrive, so don't wait too long. Alright, come get comics tomorrow because there's really cool stuff, even stuff that we didn't review. We just picked some cool things we thought you guys would want to hear about, so talk to you later. Alright, bye. See you. Well, at least she's got good outfits. <laughs> <laughs>